Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the video. This is the second part, and a long overdue part, to my culturing videos. And I suspect there's also going to be a part three and part four, depending upon interest and any other additional ideas I can come up with that uh, can improve upon this. As you remember from the first video, I said this is my no-stink method for culturing paramecia. And I need to qualify that, because... What you're doing here, this is a controlled rot scenario. You are putting in, in my case, um, hay and a, a few oak leaves and bacteria are feeding on those. If you put enough in there, you're going to stink up your whole house. But as you can see here with this particular setup, you've got clouds and clouds of paramecia. They're doing really, really well. There is a bit of a smell if I stirred the whole thing up, but as long as I only stir the surface, you're going to see how I go through that process in a few minutes. Uh, you really just don't notice any of the smell at all. And as you can see, uh, this is just a tiny fraction of a tiny drop of what's in that well, one of the jars, and I think I have five of them now. Uh, and there's a ton of paramecia here. There are also a few other things. I don't think I'm going to bother trying to you know, subculture this to the point where it's pure paramecia. I do have to be a little bit more rigorous, of course, because I was mixing the cultures together, and I'm now growing a really good culture of cyclopses, and a few less, of course, paramecia, because they feed on them. But that's okay. I mean, like I said, I'm not here to um, propagate these particular items just because I like to, even though I do. Uh, these are for fry, and cyclopses are just as good uh, to feed to fry as paramecia are. And as you can see, there's some seed shrimp there and other things, other things as well. But, you know, it's, like I said, it is just for feeding fish. And you'll notice here there's a bit of a scum that forms on uh, the surface of the, of the water. And what I do is daily, I don't bring them down here for this. I, I usually just do it where it is. It takes two seconds. Um, what it does is just breaks up the surface a little bit. I don't, as you can see, uh, dig too deeply down into this. And as far as how much hay to add versus water versus uh, anything else, you're going to have to fiddle around with that because I do the same thing. It's not something that is um, a particular amount of anything and uh, that's the way it works. Like, you know, measuring up so many grams of one thing and uh, to so, many, so much water and then adding paramecia. It is a feel. You'll get a feel for it. And uh, that is, uh, well, the majority of this here. I am now working on a culturing system for adding air. I got a couple of comments from a gentleman who mentioned uh, a couple of additional ways of, you know, changing how the air is added. And I'm going to, like I said, there's going to be a part three to this at least, uh, maybe even a part four. Um, like I said, we're going to see how this all goes. I want to make it so that there are... Um, options for you and <laughs> yeah my supervisor here is in a bit in the way but uh, this is all I really do for this I just create as many uh, jars as I'm comfortable with uh, currently I think I said I have five or six and that is one of the key things to having success when you're doing culturing don't have one culture I don't even think two is a good idea uh, the best process I've found is probably about a half a dozen you're going to find that one culture is going to be doing really, really well. And uh, you can you know, obviously harvest from that and put it into your fish tanks. And then there's going to be one, <laughs> there's always one, that just simply doesn't seem to do anything when there's really no real reason for it. I even found that with uh, whenever I was culturing all kinds of different stuff from uh, white worms, micro worms, vinegar eels, everything. Everything I tried to culture... There's always one culture that this doesn't seem to thrive, and there's always ones that just seem to always produce more and more and more. So, what I'm doing here is I'm subculturing. I poured a lot into that one jar, and then I'm going to top it with fresh. That's one thing you need to do on a fairly regular basis. Treat these as aquariums. Uh, you are adding water. Uh, basically just doing water changes and that also really keeps down uh, any kind of excess buildup of tannins and a few other things that might uh, well first off make your cultures less successful <coughs> and also you know, increase the amount of smell they might have so as like I said I'm gonna miss an awful lot in here but I am going to try and uh, keep it first off concise each video and also try and 
you know, at least a part in one or two new things. So if you're going to take anything away from this video, the two things I would, uh, hopefully that you would, are first off, uh, subculture, and keep them, uh, like I said, keep them as fresh as possible. I don't do this every day. Uh, this is a weekly process if I remember, if I have the time, and if I don't, uh, every two weeks for sure. I also, some from time to time, will completely empty a jar out, clean it out, uh, remove a lot of the uh, material that has already gone through the rot process because it just becomes you know, basically inert organic material and uh, then it's not really doing anything for the culture. And then, yes, yeah, so what I do is uh, when I, let's say, all right, I have four here. And like I said, I have five or six going currently. If one is not um, thriving, what I'll do is I'll pour that one out completely and I will... Uh, well, just basically just throw that whole thing out, clean out the jar, and then that will be what I would subculture into. That way, like I said, you have uh, the best of materials at all times. And like I said, you can see I'm not measuring anything here. I am definitely going by feel, but I've been doing this forever, so uh, it is a bit easier. And what I've done is I took a bit of the old organic material from one of the cultures, and I... Uh, put it into the one I subcultured to. Well, basically what it is, I poured water, which contains paramecia from all the other containers into that one, and then topped it up with a bit of fresh. And then what I'm going to do on top of that is add in some uh, new hay, because that's important. Uh, and the amount of it is the question mark. And I'd like to say, like I said, <laughs> I have like a, a definitive amount, but I just add a little bit at a time and then I watch for the result. I watch to see if there is uh, too much of a bit of scum on the surface, uh, uh, an increase in the amount of smell, or any of those sorts of things. And uh, if that happens, uh, what I do is uh, just a small partial water change. And the nice thing about this, if you are currently breeding fish, is you can uh, just pour that excess uh, water, uh, which is containing tons of uh, you know, paramecia, into one of your aquariums and then add fresh uh, tank water back into that. And that's as simple as this is. Now there are other things that you can do. And I, like I said in the next video I'm going to get into a bunch of that. Uh, what I want to show you is um, I'm going to show you how to add air. And the thing that air does is it breaks up the surface and you really just don't get any smell at all. But to date I have noticed that when I do that I end up with a lot less in the way, in the way of cultures, as far as density of uh, organisms. And I'm going to try and figure out a way of making that uh, more productive, but we'll see. The other thing you can do is I had a uh, question from someone about, uh, I can't get hay, so where do I, what do I do? Um, you don't need hay. Uh, hay is just what I like to use. Uh, I have heard people use everything from dehydrated turnips to a pile of other things. All that really matters is uh, it is vegetative uh, material. That's all it needs to be. Some sort of vegetable matter. And uh, from that you'll end up with more than you need for uh, culture. And this is the setup. You can see there's a bit of air uh, uh, trickling in there. And now currently what I'm doing is deciding how much plant material to put in that and see if I can get enough of a um, rot going that I can uh, have you know sufficient amount of material. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Leave comments. Let me know what you think of all this. And we'll see you in the next video. And hopefully we'll have some more interesting results for you. Bye for now.